Hi guys, today you join me mid-session at Old Mill Lakes in Lincolnshire where it's a bitterly cold day and in this video I would like to show you how I go about approaching a typical winter session from arriving at the venue and trying to locate the car to the rigs and tactics that I employ at this time of year. Now the most important factor when it comes to a successful carp fishing, or any fishing for that matter, regardless of the time of year, is without a doubt location. You can have the best baits, the best rigs in the world, but if you're not fishing where the carp are, then you're not going to catch them. But what do you do if you get to a venue in the depths of winter and you see no signs of carp whatsoever? Well, my best advice would be to do your research on your chosen venue, because carp are creatures of habit, and quite often during the winter months, they tend to reside in the same areas year after year. But what do you do if your lake seems to follow no particular pattern and each winter the carp seem to be in different areas? Well, just like us, carp don't like being cold. So I think the best thing to do is to think where the carp would feel at its most comfortable. This could be sheltered from a biting easterly wind, uh, perhaps on the, beyond the back of an island or an area of calm, sheltered water. Or it could be in an area where they feel safe and have cover and protection, such as snaggy areas or areas where there's dying weed beds and lily beds. So take this session, for example. I started off by fishing a swim where I thought the carp may be, but after almost 18 hours of having no indications and not seeing any carp, it's clear that the carp are not in the area. So instead I've moved to the opposite end of the lake on the back of a really cold wind and almost immediately I began to receive liners. So there are carp in this area. So the best advice I can give to any angler fishing during the winter months is be prepared to move. During these cold months, the carp can often become very tightly shoaled and it isn't unusual to have a high percentage of the lake's population in one very small area. So be prepared to up sticks and go looking for those carp instead of sat behind motionless bobbins. Well, this is crazy. Being sat around the other side of the lake for about 15 hours with, with nothing to show. Move swims, almost immediately began to receive liners and had a take on the middle rod and that fish is sat in the landing net. While I was playing that fish, one of the other rods ripped off and Brad had to deal with that one. Then hopefully we can land this one and have a bit of a January double bubble. Well, this is the second fish from that double take and the smaller of the two fish, an absolutely pristine common of 25 pound 11 ounces. And I would have been absolutely ecstatic to catch just this fish on its own. But I did get another fish and it's waiting in the landing net and that one's quite a bit bigger, but we'll come to him in a bit. But it really does just go to show the importance of being mobile because for the first 15 or more hours of this session I spent in the wrong place, I didn't get any action at all. Move swims within half an hour, we had two bites and two fantastic carp. So this was the first fish that we caught and the larger of the two and it weighs, I don't know, you have to tell me. <laughs> 34. 14. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> well, just an hour ago, this session was looking like it was going to end in a blank, but I moved swims and the move paid off handsomely. Two bites in quick succession, with this one being the biggest at just under £35. What an awesome, solid, chunky January carp that is. I'm absolutely buzzing.
Now, when it comes to choosing your winter venue, there are a few key elements that I think make a venue more productive at this time of year. Now, I do find that shallower venues, as a rule, fish better during the colder months. There are obviously a lot of deeper venues that, that kind of go against this rule, but generally speaking, shallower venues are more responsive to changes in temperature. The shallower water warms up quicker, so even if the air temperature just rises by a few degrees, it can often switch the fish onto feeding. Also venues that are relatively flat with little variation in depth certainly makes things a lot easier in terms of locating the carp and also venues that are weed free. On weedy venues the fish can often become grouped up, held up in that weed and just sit there motionless for large periods of the day and while they are not moving they're expending very little energy and have little inclination to feed. But ultimately, when it comes to choosing your winter water, I think the most important thing is to pick somewhere that keeps you motivated and driven to actually get out there on the bank regardless of the conditions. Now this could be on a well-stocked, prolific venue where it's possible to catch large numbers of carp in a session and you're not sat around inactive in the cold. Or it could be on a big fish venue where you may only catch one or two fish during the winter period, but it's a big fish. And it all depends on you. Whatever you want from your fishing to help you remain focused and motivated during the harshest of times. Now, a lot of people think that during the colder winter months, the carp immediately head for the deepest area of the lake. And that isn't always the case at all. In fact, during this winter period, the carp are often suspended within the water column at whatever depth they feel they're most comfortable. During periods of high air pressure, and by that I mean over a thousand millibars of pressure, the carp can often be found in the middle or even upper layers of the lake, and may perhaps only venture down to lake bed for very short periods to feed. Now during these periods of high pressure when the fish aren't on the bottom you obviously want to present your hook bait at whatever depth the carp are sat and the best way to do this is with a zig. Now a lot of people think that zigs are purely a summer fishing tactic but that really isn't the case at all. In fact I often find myself fishing with zigs much more in the winter than I do in the summer. Now there are two ways of fishing with a zig, either with a fixed length zig set at whatever length or depth you think the carp are sat, or that's my favorite way, and that is with an adjustable zig. With an adjustable zig, it's easy to change the depth of what the hook bait is positioned simply by raising or lowering the float within the water. And also this adds extra movement to the hook bait. And quite often, just by moving that hook bait, just by six inches, it can provoke a quick bite. Now when it comes to hook baits for fishing with zigs, my choice would always be foam. If I'm fishing in that top third, I would always choose black foam. If I'm fishing in the bottom third, I prefer to use yellow. And I would fish these in conjunction with the Fox Zig Aligner. Now some venues have a ban on artificial baits and quite often foam is also included in this artificial baits ban. And in these situations, instead of using foam, I would use the Northern Special Mini Pop-Ups. I would fish them on a simple knotless knot rig with a hook bait positioned tight to the hook. Now another tactic that I employ a lot at this time of year is fishing with single hook baits. And by that I mean fishing with no loose feed around the hook bait at all. It's a great way of exploring the swim. At this time of year, the carp can be often very tightly shoaled together. And if you see one carp show or one feeding fish, it can mean that there are a number of carp in the immediate vicinity. And in these situations, a well-placed single hook bait is often all that's needed to induce a bite. 
It's also a good way of feeling your way into the session. And by that, I mean gauging how the carp are feeding. And if bites are forthcoming, it then allows you to determine whether it's necessary or not to introduce any background feed. Now, when it comes to my choice of hook baits for fishing as singles, it would either be a wafter or a pop-up. If the lake bed is relatively clean and there's no debris that could potentially catch on the hook point and hinder the hooking potential of the rig, then I would always fish a, a, a wafter setup or a, a bottom bait type setup. If, however, there was debris, something that could catch on a hook point and prevent it from catching hold in the carp's mouth freely, then I would look to fish with a pop-up. Now, my preferred options here for hook bait choice would be the Northern Special Wafters and either the Northern Special Pop-Ups or my soon-to-be-released Carp Freak Pop-Ups. If conditions are looking favourable, such as low pressure and an increase in temperature, then I often like to introduce some background feed. Now, at this time of year though, I always like to err on the side of caution and bait very lightly, often just baiting for one bite at a time. It's the age old adage of once you put it in, you can't take it back out again and I don't want to risk overfeeding the swim. Now there are several different baiting strategies that you can employ at this time of year, but my favourite is a simple, straightforward boilie crumb. I use a live system boilies during the colder winter months and 48 hours prior to my session, I soak them in Amino Blend 365 and Carnation Milk. The reason I do this is it hugely increases the food signals and attractor levels, which means you only need to introduce a small quantity of bait to provide huge amounts of attraction. So after a 48 hour soak, I then put the boilies in a blender at home to give me a nice fine boilie crumb like this. So once the boilie is in its crumbed form like this, there are two methods of applying it. The first one is you can make it into a ball and either catapult it or ball it in by hand. And the other option is to spam it out. So once this is in a baited situation, you are left with lots of very fine particles on the lake bed, which provide masses of attraction, but very little by way of actual sustenance. So the carp have to feed for longer though actually becoming full. So there you have it, my top tips and tactics for fishing in the winter months. For me personally, I absolutely love fishing at this time of year. The banks are quieter, there's fewer anglers, and I do feel that catching a carp in the winter is just that little bit more rewarding than catching them at any other time of year. So get yourself out there, because as I've shown in this video, the rewards are definitely there for the taking.